Hey, this is Joel Duff. Hey, I just jumped on here because I'm reading the front page of Answers in Genesis, and they have a Ken Ham blog post about coming attractions at the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. Uh, but there's one little tidbit that was mentioned that I just had to get on and say something about uh, because a prophecy of mine has been fulfilled, right? Well, prophecy, kind of a strong word, but I made a prediction a couple months ago. It wasn't really a hard prediction to make. But that prediction is coming true. Let me show you what that prediction was. I'm going to go back and show you the video in which I made that prediction as well and, and how I kind of framed it. And then we'll check out a couple other things about Answers in Genesis. So here's Ken Ham's blog, and he's uh, he's talking about exciting new developments coming for the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. Really, it's no like really big construction. They've got a lot of construction there going on. These are like, here's the newest things that are coming. Uh, that includes a children's museum, basically, as an extension of the Creation Museum. Then they're also going to add uh, or update the virtual reality theater that they have. Um, they're adding a fourth deck to the Ark. But here's why we're here. A third project is a very interesting one with enormous potential for future impact. But first a reminder, technology is great, but it can be used for evil or good. Hmm, I wonder, wonder how they're going to use it. Going to use it for evil, or are they going to use it for good? For instance, Answers in Genesis is on all the major social media platforms. All right, we all know that social media is evil, but we're on all those platforms um, because people use such platforms for evil, but we use them to proclaim far and wide the truth of God's word and the gospel to market the ministry to all of our outreaches. All right, fair enough. I understand that. You know, they are an amazing marketing operation. Uh, they know how to pull all the levers and to get the eyeballs and clicks. I'm sure we've all heard of AI. Ah, here it comes. Artificial intelligence. There's no doubt this is becoming a major force in our culture in all sorts of ways. However, AI is based on human programming, which contains all kinds of biases. Right. The AI has to be trained. Like what material is it fed? How does it come up with the answers that it comes up with? A lot of it is just, you know, machine learning on material. And it's going to give you the most common response, given the types of words that you put in. And this is where I've mentioned in the past. It's not like it's going to come up with uh, young earth creationist friendly answers. And even if you ask for a young earth explanation for something, yes, it'll come up with like, here's what a young earth creationist might say. However, you should know, you know, it always adds in the little blurb about how this is not a mainstream idea. There are those that disagree. Now, Answers in Genesis doesn't want you to see, you know, alternative viewpoints <laughs> that aren't expressed in a way that they would like to express it. And so wouldn't it be great if we had an AI tool that only gave a worldview response that is based on a young earth, right? We need a young earth artificial intelligent agent. That's what they plan on making. And that's what I predicted they were going to make. I suggested this is exactly what they're going to do with their multimedia enterprise that they've been developing. So as it says here, when one asks AI questions, the answers are not necessarily based on convictions which come from God's word. We have access to expertise to build AI based on Christian assumptions, including our answers in Genesis database. Yes, they have a voluminous database and they've been collecting more and more and more material that fits in the answers in Genesis worldview. They have videos, they have pamphlets, they have articles, right? So all of that stuff can be in the terminology of AI building scraped, right? All that data, all that information can be used to train an AI agent or model to respond only within the context of that particular worldview. Such an AI tool would stand alone, all right? It would be special, it would be unique, and it would be incredibly important, like ChatGPT for apologetics. I mean, there actually are already custom chat GPTs that are for Christian apologetics, but all apologetic issues with our specific bent to them, that's not yet been created, but they're on their way to doing it. It can be used to enhance the ARC and Creation Museum with technology-based experiences for all ages. For example, we're bringing NOAA to life 
with a life-sized animation who talks to guests answering questions about the Ark and the Flood. We're already excited to bring the results to early testing. The full potential of AI for apologetics is huge. And what they're talking about there is like, here, well, here's your Noah, right? And you have your animated, or in this case, a hologram Noah. And you could walk up to it and say, Noah, like, how did the kangaroos get off the Ark and get to where they're at? And no one would respond, right? I mean, you could you could use uh, video generation in order to fit to voice, right? Uh, AI generated voice. And where does the answer come from? Their vast database that they've trained the AI on. So Noah will simply give you the response that is derived from the answers in Genesis literature. It really is a natural progression, and this is exactly what it's going to be used for in many other contexts outside of young earth creationism. They're simply uh, joining the ride. So let me show you real quick what I had said about this, my prediction about answers in Genesis, which is a lot of what I'm saying now, but a little bit different way. Let's just give that a little, a quick listen. Uh, so that it's the thing that is seen by the most people. And there's not much, not really much chance that any of the current AI chatbots are going to do that, right? They're probably going to not represent the young earth answers, young earth perspective. Um, so, this is a long-winded right, way up. of saying that uh, I did, I'm, I'm I think 1. the answers in Genesis will do. Now, whether they've thought of this or not, I don't think that I'm going to uh, be like giving them some kind of inspiration. I think that they've already thought of this. But if they haven't, uh, they're going to think of it anyway. So it's not like me, I'm giving them some kind of gold nugget. I mean, it is if they haven't thought of it. <laughs> I gave you a um, gold nugget. This golden idea. Uh, they have the resources. Unlike the other organizations, uh, Answers in Genesis has, has enough collective resource. All right, but I mean like videos and written stuff, right? to train basically um, an AI chatbot on its own data, right? And you can do that these days. You can take ChatGPT4, and if you have a paid account, you can upload a whole bunch of information. Actually, it's, for me, it's kind of limited, but for others, you know, if you buy a more enterprise account, you can upload huge amounts of material from your own organization and then have it read all that material so it stores in its memory. And then you can simply search that knowledge base and say, get your answers from this knowledge base, as opposed to get it from just all the rest of what you've machine learned from the rest of the world, the right database. Right, so then if somebody comes and searches through this particular chatbot, like it's a sub chatbot of the major chatbot, right? Uh, ChatGPT4, four answers in Genesis. And you could put, they could put it on their website, and they could put it on their other multimedia um, pages. And those who come to answers in Genesis, right, looking for answers from Genesis, then will actually get answers from Genesis rather than answers from the rest of the world. Right, so they create their own internal search engine. Uh, and this is just the next step in terms of creating a silo, right? Creating a, a Christian wall, you know, bridge against the rest of society. You've got your... I'll show you an example of this. You've got, your, uh, you've got your books. You have your approved reading lists, right? You have your Bible uh, curriculum. Um, and so, and you have your news. You have your uh, videos that now are covering all kinds of social issues. In other words, almost any question, actually the dream of Ken Hamilton is that any question you'd have as a Christian could, could be answered from Answers in Genesis, right? Within this particular perspective of a young earth. All right, and their particular hermeneutic or way of reading and understanding the scriptures. Uh, and that would then apply to all cultural issues and all questions of our day. And if you can get people to be within that wall, you know, believe like I need to exclude this outside world, then they provide a search engine, right? They provide their own worldwide web or access to information that is derived from their own knowledge base. And therefore it's biased toward answers in Genesis, right? They're saying, you know, the current chatbot, you know, chat GPT 4.0, uh, and Claude 3 and Perplexity and there's, you know, uh, Meta has one and um, La what was that? Llama 3 and I've only just kind of barely played with that one. Um, yes, all of those do not have a bias towards a young earth. I have a bias toward old earth perspective uh, on any questions involving in geology and evolution and uh, biology and astronomy and so forth. Um, and so they're going to, they're going to, I'm saying they're going to, yeah, because I really believe they're going to do this, right? Once they figure this out, um, this is the next step in their own evolution as a multimedia enterprise. Yeah, I think they're figuring um, it out. And this capturing AI to turn it toward uh, shaping and influencing the people within their sphere and basically maintaining that sphere. Uh, they're going to use that as a, as a way of continuing to manipulate people. And this is this is really not a concern just of me. I mean, I've, I've watched enough videos now. This isn't just about Christians versus or young earth versus old earth. This is... Um, you know, Republicans and Democrats or uh, different uh, sects or different races or different, however you want to categorize uh, different people groups with different persuasions who are trying to influence others in this world, right? Are all trying to manipulate the message. I think it's only natural that Answers in Genesis, based on its past history, will take this next step or next foray. So now let me show you, right? I've been babbling along for a while. I don't think I need to say a whole lot more uh, about yeah, this. So I let me be a little more. Now. All right. That's enough babbling from me. Well, that me, that me right there. Uh, I got just a few more words to say. I want to show you something 
Um, just an example, just a, a small taste of what Answers in Genesis uh, can do. And really, any one of you could do quite easily. Because uh, if I can do this, uh, you can do this. Yeah, here's my own uh, custom GPT I made in my account with uh, um, OpenAI, right? And so I have, I'm not going to show you all the the prompting or the, the code behind this uh, that tells it basically how to go into Answers in Genesis and how to access information, what kind of format to pull the answers out from Answers in Genesis. But basically, this is my custom GPT that says, look, you want an answer from Genesis? Right? What does Genesis, Answers in Genesis have to say? And right now, this is mostly just from their website, which contains all their written material. This isn't, this isn't going in and capturing stuff from their YouTube channel and all that. But eventually, that that is what Answers in Genesis is going to build, right? They're going to have access to all their information, and they'll pretty much exclude outside information such that all the answers are built within their own, within the context of their content. Um, what I've done is I made this is really just for myself. Uh, I wanted to know, like, what are they, what does Answers in Genesis have to say about X? And then it will tell me what web pages and what documents uh, those that thing that I'm looking for is mentioned on. And I'll just show you one quick example. I already did this earlier, so I'm just going to show you for that. What does Answers in Genesis have to say about Joel Duff? All right, so it looks at the Answers in Genesis uh, website, collects six different locations where I mentioned, which is about right. I, I know the Answers in Genesis website well. Of course, I know where I've been mentioned in the past. Uh, and here's what they conclude. Answers in Genesis is critical of Joel Duff, a biology professor at the University of Akron, for his positions on creationism, particularly his alignment with theistic evolution and his involvement with biologos. Yes, they always, always mention evolution and biologos every time I'm mentioned. Um, Answers in Genesis argues that Duff has misrepresented, often misrepresents, young earth creationism beliefs and accuses him of poor scholarship and a lack of understanding of creation positions. I'll leave that up to you, the listener, to decide whether I really lack understanding of creationist positions and that I have poor scholarship and I'm not presenting them fairly. This suggests that his critiques often show a fundamental misunderstanding or oversimplification of, y, of the YEC framework. I mean, sometimes there's a necessary you know, simplification of their ideas. I understand sometimes there's more complexities involved, but I think I spent a lot of time actually digging into some of the complex uh, is probably more, I probably dig in farther than most of you want to hear in many cases and make it too complex. Um, which includes the belief in rapid speciation within created kinds. Yes, that's something I talk about a lot, right, on this channel, and that I've been very critical of them. Uh, after the Genesis flood, a concept answers in Genesis describes as based on biblical interpretation of species diversification within the limits of kinds or mean, and, and helpfully are giving me the links which I could go to the websites that contain that particular information uh, about what I've said there. And by the way, this is an upgrade from a couple months ago. They're actually using, and I could tell from my search, they were using for this custom GPT, um, uh, chat GPT 01 preview uh, to generate this. Anches in Genesis asserts that Duff and other biologues associate affiliated writers dismiss the validity of a lateral genesis opting instead for evolutionary interpretations they believe undermine biblical authority answers in genesis notes that duff's perspective promotes a synthesis between evolutionary theory and christian faith which answers in genesis perceives as a compromise that strays from scriptural orthodoxy yes the word compromiser comes up with my name almost every time i mentioned on the site they argue that interpretations incorrectly suggest that accepting natural processes for speciation brings young earth creationist beliefs closer to darwinian evolution right i've been talking about how accusing Answers in Genesis in particular of really um, taking on a lot of evolutionary concepts and pushing them without really revealing to their audience uh, how closely affiliated they are with most of those mechanisms. Answers in Genesis responds by stating that they recognize some level adaptation speciation but maintain that this is within the biblical framework and does not allow for the evolu extensive evolutionary changes suggested by mainstream science. I've said the amount of change that they expect in terms of like two canines becoming 30 to 50 different species 
and the diversity in different kinds of deer or giraffes that have short necks that then become long necks uh, is actually a tremendous amount of evolution that they don't recognize that they're uh, accepting. Further, further, Answers in Genesis contends that Duff's critiques often show a lack of engagement with their scientific literature. A lack of engagement with their scientific literature. Uh, yes, that is a, that is an actual criticism from an article on the Inches in Genesis website. So this isn't simply conjecture on the point of AI synthesizing and imagining uh, what my views are. This is just taken from the six articles in which I mentioned and putting that information together. So I'd say this is a very accurate description of the way that Answers in Genesis describes me. Oh yeah, they argue that if Duff and Biologos were more familiar with young Earth creationist technical research, they might better appreciate the detailed scientific explanations that Answers in Genesis claim, supporting their interpretation of rapid post-flood speciation. Of course, I've read all that literature. Answers in Genesis believes that Duff's assertions about creationists altering their beliefs to accommodate modern science lack historical accuracy and oversimplify how young Earth creationist scientists apply biblical interpretation to scientific inquiry. Then here again, a couple more references. Um, and then it suggests like, here's some other things you might want to consider or know about. And so it suggests I might want to, uh, how do they address my claims uh, about, you know, further more information about that. I didn't explore that, but anyway, this gives you an idea of the way that a custom GPT is going to interact with the world of information in which you can say, I only want to know what this one place and this one this one organization has to say about me. This is no different than what a company would do in creating a chat bot in which you are engaging in a conversation about what services does that company have? It's not pulling in information from other companies. It's just using that company's information. And that's what Answers in Genesis is going to do here. They're going to, they're going to generate an internal search engine and eventually it'll be all integrated into Answers in Genesis website and all the other resources they have, right? And so you can get a subscription to their, uh, to basically, you know, more access to more content, homeschooling material, all that kind of stuff, right? Everything, all different forms of media will eventually be wrapped into this such that you can take your student, take your kids, and you can let them, you know, access like this is a Google search, right? Except this Google search is going to come up with um, only answers that Answers in Genesis approves from since it's only coming from their material. Okay, I just wanted to, I, I saw this on the front of Answers in Genesis website and I kind of knew this day was coming. And so it gave me another chance to talk about uh, how uh, Answers in Genesis is going to take advantage of AI. And they're always on really pretty close to the cutting edge on things. Um, and that's why they will, as I said, in my other video, um, this is where they get way ahead of some of the other creationist organizations, right? They can even draw upon the information of those other organizations. There's nothing really that those other organizations can do, right? They can actually scrape, you know, they can gather all the information from all different, uh, well, they can also, uh, moderate that information, right? That data. They can take everything from ICR. They can take everything from Creation Ministries International. They can pull that in and then they can, um, you know, do quality control on it. Like, you know, we don't really care for these ideas or this, or this doesn't agree with answers in Genesis. And they can train, right, their chatbot only on the best material that represents the truth, right? And uh, so that allows you then to interact with um, the real word of answers in Genesis. All right, that's it for today. Don't have a lot of time. Uh, we'll see what else I come up with uh, in the next coming weeks. So it's very, very busy for me right now in terms of the semester. And I have some other like really big projects I'm working on really for YouTube and my blog uh, that take a much more concerted effort to put together. Uh, but I hope it'll be worth it in the end uh, with some somewhat more polished and deeper uh, level inspection of a few topics. All right, till then. Hey, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.